Today I'm going to talk about um, really a, a personal story that I had. So long story short, um, you know, I came from Thomson Reuters where, we, uh, where we, we've been building analytics um, and productionalizing analytics for a long time. And what I found at Thomson Reuters is that there's some very specific things that you can do to uh, operationalize analytics and be successful. And they're not the things that traditional companies do. Um, so that's what we're going to talk about today. So uh, it was an early cloud Aaron and, uh, and also uh, co-author of the Getting Started with Kudu book, uh, co-creator of Apache Century, and uh, committer on a number of projects, including Hive and Parquet and the incubator and things of that nature. So I was driving in rural Wisconsin and I saw a, a ad for Marshfield Clinic. And Marshfield Clinic is, is, is just a clinic in the middle of Wisconsin, but they're building applications so that you, know, you can, for example, uh, visit, the, visit the doctor without ever leaving your smartphone, right? And it occurred to me that traditional companies like insurance companies and clinics in the middle of Wisconsin and uh, uh, you know, finance companies are all trying to do the same thing that we've been doing, that we were doing at Thomson Reuters for a very long time. And that's uh, productionalize uh, data products. So they have data, they need to uh, create a product and deliver that to some internal user or some external user. And the thing about it is, is we learned some very specific lessons at Thomson Reuters on how to interact with distributed systems, how to build distributed systems, and how to, how to operationalize uh, data products. And these aren't the things that traditional companies are able to do. So, so here's the goal. The goal is that we're going to build a business that can take data, uh, can perform data science, and then can take the models that are built from that, from that data science activity and and provide it as a service for other parts of the business, whether it be uh, iPhone application or, uh, or um, uh, some internal uh, scoring tool or something like that. And so in order to do that, you got to have scalable storage and compute, and you got to have uh, a scalable data science platform that allows you to quickly iterate, and you've got to have this like software engineering capability of productionalizing the output of that uh, activity. And in order to do that, you've got to do a few things. Now, what happens in, in traditional companies? So um, traditional companies are really used to supporting monolithic applications, a database that's vertically integrated and sits on server X, a web application that runs on these three servers. Um, that's the kind of world that traditional companies live in. Uh, what they typically have is these very long dev cycles where a whole bunch of work happens and then we promote it to production and then honestly what typically happens is a manual deployment and then chaos, okay? And the reason that it's chaotic is because there's a change, it breaks things, and no one knows was it this change or was it the 999 other changes that are part of that software release. So, this is a way to fail uh, when you're building and productionalizing data products. So what your operations teams will tell you is that distributed systems is extremely difficult. And the reason is distributed systems are not monolithic applications. They are distributed over a number of servers. And any one of those servers can have a problem. Um, systems are now built in, in more of a layered model than a, a vertically integrated model. And what that means is that, you know, sure, a developer using the platform, they can, you know, learn Spark and some HDFS, and then, you know what, they can be productive. Um, but the operators of the system, they're going to have a, a Spark developer come to them and say, you know what, you configured Spark wrong and it's broken. And then they're going to have an Impala SQL developer come in and say, you know what, uh, you have configured Impala wrong because my uh, Impala query is not working. Please help me. And they need to understand the internals of those systems, um, which is much different than in the past. The other thing is there's obviously cloud is out there. Cloud is both a great opportunity, because yes, we can spin up servers significantly quicker than we used to in the past, um, but it also has significant challenges. Uh, because guess what, those APIs don't always expect, they don't always return a server like you expect. They don't always have the right number of disks, for example. Um, and cloud basically introduces 
the possibility for additional chaos beyond uh, what we're trying to do in building our software product. So source control and automation are things that can reduce chaos and make uh, this endeavor that we've in, we're in undertaking uh, uh, more sane. So what we need to have is configuration and code all need to be 100% source control. There needs to be no manual configuration whatsoever. Um, because if you're doing manually configuration, then we've got to build out 100 new servers, like not going to work. Um, artisanal server builds, just not possible. So source of truth absolutely has to be in source control. And uh, you'd be surprised, but a lot of customers that I go into um, ask, well, what's source control? The other thing is that we need to have a modern software development approach. So no more we take 100 changes that we're all doing, and then we put them in the dev environment and see what happens. What needs to happen is that you have to, do lo you have, to have the ability to do local testing, which is actually pretty hard for a lot of people. And then you also need to have continuous integration. So when a developer makes a change and they push it to uh, source control, we need to run tests on that before it gets committed to the master branch, okay? And uh, there's, there's ways to do that. There's no more like who broke the build. The build should never break because we can run tests before it gets committed to, to the master branch. And then when, that, when that, that check happens and that code review happens and we deploy uh, that, uh, that commit to the master branch, then uh, we need to automatically take that software package and ship it out to the, the, the testing environment. And that should all happen in an automated fashion with no manual effort whatsoever. If you're not doing those th these things, then honestly, you're setting yourself up for uh, significant challenges in this new world. All right, that's all I got. Thank you.